Everyone Needs a Little Hero. Chapter 13. Growing Curiosities. It was later in the evening, just past dinner. Hero had helped clear up the kitchen and put away the remaining bits of food before asking if he could go on an evening stroll around just to stretch his legs. It was almost two weeks ago to the day when he last saw Ray, and Hero wanted to know how the newcomer was doing. Plus, he had more questions for his fellow borrower. His parents agreed to let him go as long as he wasn't out too late, and, hastily, Hero agreed to the terms. Even if Hero didn't get to see his friend, he still had things to think about. He slung on his borrowing bag before darting out of the house to the popsicle staircase where he dared to take the steps two at a time until he reached the fifth level. The teenage borrower waved to a few of his neighbors here and there, but his mind was wandering already to the things that were bugging him. The first of those things being the fact that Ray lived on the fifth floor and that the human his parents warned him about was on the same floor. Coincidence? Hero was starting to think not. Were they seen as soon as they arrived? Or was it something else? Ray seemed secretive about something, but was more than willing to talk about his interest in humans and their contraptions. The second thing pulling at Hero's mind was the fact that his parents and his siblings were no longer leaving every day to go to some undisclosed location. Once again, it had something to do with the fifth floor. Hero was sure of it. The bright-eyed borrower's curiosity was getting the better of him. Even though he wanted to respect his parents and their order to stay away from the new family and the fifth floor, something else was pulling him in that direction. He was about to duck down one of the darkened passages when he heard his name being called from across the way. Hero, wait up! Hero turned around to see Ray jogging along the path. How's it going? Ray, slightly out of breath, was smiling from ear to ear as he approached his friend. Hey, long time no see, replied Hero, mirroring Ray's smile. Things have been going, I guess. I finally get to get out of the house a little more. Thank goodness. I was actually going to come find you. What are you doing running around? Looking for something? Ray shrugged and looked up the elevator shaft, which vanished into an abyss of black above them. I was just exploring. I've been here for almost two months and haven't ventured up to the top floors. Plus, I wanted to try out my new invention. What do you think? Ray slipped off his backpack and pulled the edges down to reveal a dual hooked mechanism inside of a hard plastic case with a very thin nylon wire wrapped around a gear-like mechanism. Hero wasn't exactly sure what to make of the machine, but it looked really cool. Great, right? Asked Ray, obviously thrilled at his invention. He looked up into his friend's face and immediately picked up on his confusion. It's a portable pulley system. You toss this hook over the edge and secure it on this bottom part here, by hooking it onto something sturdy on the ground. You cook whatever you want and use this crank on the side to lift it up. Then, because of the pulleys inside with all of the gears, you can basically lift anything you want from one level to the next, all weighing about the same as a AA battery. What? No way, said Hero, his jaw dropping. But won't the yarn need to be replaced? Nope replied Ray proudly. Nylon string, 0.5 millimeters, harder to snap, so it's more durable. Hero looked closer at the device, seeing that it used to be made of some kind of correction tape machine that humans used on paper. Hero was so enthralled that he almost didn't notice a few things that were a little odd with the machine. One of those things was the place of the crank. The hole was cleanly cut for one. Also, how did Ray get a hold of special nylon string? Did the human on the fifth floor have some? Finally, the elements looked relatively new, from the correction tape box to the fish hooks on the ends. Did he borrow something that 
wasn't used? Wouldn't that be noticed? Anyway, sighed Ray. I was just wandering around exploring. You said you were looking for me? What for? Hero now felt self-conscious about wanting to find Ray. The teenage borrower was hoping to find Ray closer to his home so he could possibly be invited in and get some questions answered. The bolder part of his personality wanted to ask Ray directly, but the other, curious part, thought he should wait and see what Ray offered through natural conversation. Just to hang out. I haven't seen you in a while and wanted to see how you were settling in, answered Hero. <laughs> Couldn't be better, he replied. Oh, why is that? Good borrowings? Asked Hero. His heart quickened in that brief moment before Ray responded. <sighs> yeah, Ray stated. Good borrowing. Finally have my room the way I want it, and for the life of me, I will find a way to make a decent trigger for my hook launcher. Anyway, uh, want to show me the upper floors? I wouldn't want to poke around someplace I wasn't supposed to be. Hero felt slightly disheartened. He would rather have Ray show him his room on the fifth floor, so he could get a glimpse of this human he was borrowing from. But getting to spend time with Ray would be just as fun. For now. Sure thing, said Hero. Do you feel up for some climbing, or do you want to take the lift? Climbing, if that's okay. I was told recently I need to work on more muscles other than my brain if I want to be a good borrower, said Ray. Oof, ouch. Yeah, my brother says stuff like that to me too. You know, the whole be careful spiel, replied Hero. For a brief second, Ray opened his mouth like he was going to say something, but he stopped himself and instead followed Hero around the elevator shaft to a set of emergency climbing ladders on the other side of the hole. As they climbed, Hero and Ray talked about how humans construct their ladders and all of the inventions Ray wanted to make. He was still fixated on the idea of flight, but nothing they had other than paper airplanes and parachutes could fly. And even then, it wasn't for very long. Don't you think it would be cool, though, to fly around like Superman or someone like that? Asked Gray. That would be really cool, but also kind of scary. And wouldn't you be more like Batman since he needs gadgets to do stuff? Ooh, even better! Superman is cool and all, but he's an alien, and I'm pretty sure we're more like humans than aliens, replied Ray. They reached the top, and Ray paused to sigh heftily. He looked out at the darkness below, seeing some of the small twinkling lights of their makeshift city down below. Hero was going to do it, the whole way up the ladders. He was fighting with himself to get the courage to ask Ray about the human they lived above. They rounded the corner to see the last set of ladders when they were suddenly faced with an elderly borrower ascending the first few rungs of the ladder, hand over fist. She was moving very slowly up the ladder, and there was a plastic bottle shaped like a fish on her back filled with some kind of clear liquid that looked like water. Hero recognized her immediately and, without hesitation, he and Ray both rushed forward to stop the elderly borrower from ascending any further. Granny Hobbs! Here, let me help you with that, said Hero as he greeted the elderly borrower. She had on a patchwork poncho made of dark maroons and oranges, making her look like an autumn leaf. Her short, white, puffball hair made her head look like the fuzzy part of a dandelion, and her chocolate brown eyes, though crinkled and crow-footed on the edges, were just as sharp as ever. Well, good morning, youngsters. Yeah, I don't recognize you, little mister, but I know my little hero anywhere. Uh, where are you two off to? Asked Granny Hobbs, as she allowed Hero to help remove the plastic water fish from her back. Oh, right. Uh, Granny Hobbs, this is Ray. He just moved here, introduced Hero. Nice to meet you, replied Ray. And we were just going up so Ray could see what's up there. He hasn't been exploring, and we thought it would be fun, 
replied Hiro. Oh, I see, smiled the elderly borrower. Well, I won't keep you. She made a shaky grab at the plastic fish bottle. Well, wait a second. Right, do you mind if I help out Grady Hobbs and bring this up a level? I think I know what this is for, said Hiro. Ray nodded and smiled. Not at all. I was thinking the same thing, grinned Ray. Oh, well, aren't you both just the most proper gentlemen, smiled Grady Hobbs. Together, the three borrowers ascended the ladder and veered off to the pathway straight ahead and to the left. Unlike the other floors, this one was arranged differently. There were fewer beams and slats and significantly more panels and vents. Hero let Granny Hobbs take his arm as they walked along the beams. Hero knew where they were going and had no trouble guiding the three of them to the end location. Around the corner beams, nestled by one of the vents on the rooftop, was a place that let in the slightest bit of sunlight where Granny Hobbs fostered her garden. Hero heard Ray gasp slightly as he saw the budding flowers and sprouts forming, as well as the vines which arched and weaved through. It wasn't very big, maybe a few feet wide and a few feet long. Still, the flowers and herbs were a beautiful smattering of green in the darkened shadows of the walls. Wow, Hero, your granny is the best! Uh, did you do all this on your own? asked Ray as he jogged up and began looking at the plants, which were slightly taller than himself. At this, Granny Hobbs chuckled. <laughs> oh, sweetie, I'm not actually Hero's grandmother. However, I'm old enough I could be, smiled Granny Hobbs. I do consider Hero one of my many grandchildren, though, sweet little tyke. Just over there, dearie. I've already handled the other plants. Granny Hobbs directed Hero over to the side, where there were still a few dry plants. While Hero watered the budding flowers, he looked over at the elderly borrower with curiosity. Granny Hobbs, how many times did you climb up the ladder to water your plants today? Asked Hero. Oh, well, let's see. Granny Hobbs obviously underestimating the number as she counted out loud, finally ended and looked shyly at Hero. Maybe 17? No, 16 times. Granny! Hero scolded gently. Well, uh, the pipes up here are too thick to drill, and we haven't been able to get enough straws and other materials to run the water from the other side to right up here. It would be so very nice to have a lever to pull and then just check on the pipes and the plants. But that's just a dream. Besides, this is good exercise for me, replied Granny Hobbs. Ray, who was investigating the area, was clearly mapping out the surroundings. Hero didn't know the slightly older than him borrower very well, but he could see the look on Ray's face was that of sheer will and determination. He was thinking of a way to solve the problem. Ma'am, are there pipes nearby? Asked Ray, after several minutes of investigating his surroundings. Uh, water pipes, I mean. What? Uh, oh, of course. Uh, yes, uh, they're over there, dearie, replied Granny Hobbs. And don't worry about the whole ma'am bit. Th though you're cute as a button when you say it. You can call me Granny or Granny Hobbs. Ray paused at hearing this and smiled, biting his lip for a second and reaching up to ruffle his own hair in the back before nodding. The boys finished up in the garden and wandered around the top floor. Hero even showed Ray how to get up to the rooftop where the humans had their own greenhouse garden and sitting area. Hero once again started to get the courage to ask Ray about his home when Ray excused himself quickly, saying he had some ideas and needed his tools at the home to build. They bumped fists, and Ray vanished into the beams and pipes on the fifth floor. For a moment, Hero thought about following him, but it was Ray shouting over his shoulder. 
that he would see her tomorrow, same time, that stopped him. Ray said he had an idea. Hero watched his friend disappear, wondering what he had in store for the next day. Early the next morning, Hero found out what Ray had in mind. Ray, using his newfangled invention, was dragging straws behind him. The rope was wrapped around the middle of the soft plastic straws and was being dragged behind. Hero had never seen so many straws. Hero didn't need to be close to see that these were in top condition, looking brand new as if they were fresh out of the package. Hero wasn't usually suspicious, but this was an interesting phenomenon. Wouldn't the human notice if this many straws went missing? And Ray wanted more? Hero let his senses come back to him as he began to help his friend drag some of the straws out into the main area. What on earth? breathed Hero. Right? I was thinking that we could attach the straws end to end and secure it with tape. I'll have to go back and get some more, but I think it'll be worth it, Ray said with an inventive smile on his face. You think so? I mean, right, these looks great, brand new even. How'd you pull it off? asked Hero. Ray, for a fraction of a moment, looked hesitant. Hero involuntarily asked him a question about his home and the human he lived near. The bright green-eyed borrower instantly regretted his question, mostly because he wanted to phrase it so he could get more information. Still, borrowers can't be choosers. Ray gave a shrug, obviously a bit tense, and continued pulling the straws behind him. Uh, a human has a lot of projects, she does. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, she won't know they're missing. Anyway, we need to get a move on, said Ray. Hero, still suspicious, decided to not press any further and instead watched Ray use his device that he showed off the day before that used pulleys and levers. Ray would unhook the straws, go to the next level, secure one hook to an unmovable ledge, and then swing the longer hook down one level so Hero could secure it and pull it up. The plan was ingenious, and, after a couple of breaks and constant persistence, they brought the straws up. From there, it was smooth sailing. They had all the pieces and parts to make the full water pipe system after a couple of days of assembling. One end of the straw would go into the next end, where it was glued and taped to secure it. When they got to the end, Ray placed the straws in between the rows of vegetation and poked holes in it strategically, so it would spray from each of the punctured points onto the plants. All the while, Ray was oddly lucky to have been able to get the exact supplies he needed when he needed them. Hero knew for sure something was up now, and he was determined to figure it out very soon.